Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday the 15th of April. From electoral bond to Elon Musk, PM Modi reveals all in pre-poll interview. After Jay Shankar's call, Iran allows Indian officials to meet crew on seas vessel. And soaked in orange, Nepali town welcomes New Year. And now for all the details. Ahead of national elections in India, Prime Minister Narendra Modi in an exclusive interview with ANI countered opposition India Alliance's series of allegations and clarified on issues related to electoral bonds as well as the recent actions of the ED and the CBI. He emphasized that the 2024 elections provide an opportunity for the public to weigh the accomplishments of the Congress party over the past few decades against those of the BJP in just 10 years. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in an exclusive interview with the ANI on Monday, emphasized the significance of elections, likening them to festivals that should not be taken lightly. He underscored the 2024 national elections as an opportunity for the people of the country to draw comparisons between accomplishments of his BJP-led NDA government in the last 10 years and the Congress rule of decades. Reflecting on the challenges faced, including the formidable battle against COVID-19 and its aftermath, PM Modi asserted that despite these hurdles, India has continued to progress across at all fronts. He reiterated that the primary focus should remain on the nation and its people, lamenting the previous administration's preoccupation with dynastic politics and familiar growth at the expense of national development. अब देखिए 2024 का चुनाव तो देश के सामने का अवसर है कि एक कांग्रेस सरकार का मॉडल और एक बीजेपी सरकार का मॉडल उनका पांच छह दशक का काम मैं उनके लिए बहुत खुला मैदान छोड़ता हूं पांच छह दशक का काम और मेरा सिर्फ दस साल का काम कंपैरिजन कीजिए किसी भी क्षेत्र में कंपैरिजन कीजिए अगर कुछ कमियां होगी तो भी हमारी एफर्ट्स में कमी नहीं रही होगी टॉकिंग अबाउट इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स ही हाईलाइटेड दैट आउट ऑफ 3000 डोनर्स 26 कंपनीज वर सब्जेक्टेड टू रेड्स एंड इट वाज रिवील्ड दैट 37% ऑफ डोनेशंस वेंट टू द बीजेपी व्हाइल 63% वेंट टू ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज Furthermore, ahead of Elon Musk's meeting with him later this month, Prime Minister Modi lauded the tech entrepreneur and said his admiration is not for him personally, but for India as a whole. On the issue of Ram Temple, he said it was a political weapon for the opposition. Now it has been built, so the issue has gone out of their hands. He further said that he has big plans for the country upon his return to the office and assured that nobody needs to be scared of his decisions. India will go to polls starting April 19th with vote counting on the June 4th. Iran on Monday said it will allow Indian officials to meet the Indian crew members detained along with the Israel-linked ship MSC Ares seized by Iran's revolutionary guards on Saturday. The development came after India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar dialed up his Iranian counterpart Hussein Amir Abodelian to discuss the release of the Indian crew. In a statement, the Iranian Foreign Ministry said the Indian minister expressed concern about the situation of 17 Indian crew members aboard the seized ship and sought assistance. In response, Abdullian assured Tehran is actively monitoring the situation and arrangements will be soon made for representatives of the Indian government to meet the crew members of the vessel, the statement said. Tensions have flared up between Iran and Israel this past weekend after Iran seized Israel-linked cargo ship MSC Ares and launched hundreds of drones and missiles to Israel on Saturday night in response to a suspected Israeli attack on Iran's Syria consulate. 
New Delhi has said it is monitoring the situation and has urged immediate de-escalation with both countries exercising restraint. Moving on, Swapandeep Kaur, the daughter of Indian prisoner Sarabjit Singh, on Monday alleged Pakistan government's involvement in the death of her father's killer, Amir Sarfaraz Tamba, and stated that this is not justice. Speaking with ANI, she said her family sought a trial to find out that why her father was killed in Pakistan. She, however, admitted that her first reaction to the news was one of the satisfaction. Sarajit Singh, a farmer from the Bhikwindi area near the Indo-Pak border, inadvertently crossed into Pakistan in 1991 and was subsequently imprisoned by Pakistan on charges of being a raw agent. In 2013, he was killed by fellow inmates at Lakhpat Jail. In December 2018, the Lahore court acquitted the suspects Tamba and Mudassar due to lack of evidence. लेकिन इसके साथ ही मुझे लगता है एक बहुत बड़ी साजिश भी है ये पाकिस्तान की ही सरकार की तरफ से क्योंकि ऐसे हो सकता है बहुत सारे राज हों जो उनको लगता हो कि बाहर ना आ जाएं दुनिया के सामने क्योंकि ये भी एक पाकिस्तान सरकार की और वहां की एजेंसियों की ही एक मिली बुगत के जो है कारण इन्होंने एक साजिश रच के ही मेरे पापा का वहां जेल में कत्ल करवाया था मूविंग ऑन Balochistan's Chief Minister Sarfaraz Bhukti on Sunday chaired a high-level meeting where it was decided to revise the security plan of the province post the tragic incident in Noshki district. Separatist militant group Baloch Liberation Army has claimed responsibility for the attack in which gunmen shot and killed nine men after abducting them from an Iran-bound bus on Friday night. Police said the nine labourers were shot at close range after determining they were from Punjab province. The insurgents have previously claimed responsibility for similar killings in the region, which is home to deep water Gwadar seaport being developed by China. The insurgents have also targeted Chinese nationals and their interest in the region recently. Sri Lanka's recovery could be stalled by abrupt policy changes after elections later this year, even as the economy has shown signs of stabilizing, the Asian Development Bank has warned in its latest report. Crisis hit Sri Lanka, secured a $2.9 billion IMF loan last year, with President Ranil Vikramasinghe hiking taxes and cutting generous subsidies to restore government finances. But the ADB said presidential polls due by October could weaken the commitment to austerity measures. Vikramasinghe is seeking re-election and his challengers have so far opposed his efforts to balance the budget in line with the IMF bailout. The ADB also warned that any delay in restructuring external debt could also impact prospects. Sri Lanka had expected a deal with foreign lenders, including China, its biggest bilateral creditor, by the end of March, but so far no accord has been announced. The Neva community in Nepal painted the Bhaktapur city in the colours of the Vermilion as people came together to welcome the Lunar New Year during the annual Sindhu Jatra. Take a look. The Nevar community in Nepal painted the Thimi town in orange color as people came together at the Bal Kumari Temple's front yard to welcome the Nepali New Year 2081 during the annual Sindur Jatra. Celebrated on the second day of the traditional Lunar New Year, devotees carried idols of different deities in a total of 19 palanquins this time, singing and dancing to the beats of drums. The dawn of Sindur, a vermilion, starts with the touring of the palanquins by devotees who take three rounds of the Bal Kumari temple. Participants from all age groups were seen smearing the vermilion on each other's faces as well as throw it in the air in good jest. The vermilion powder is considered sacred and a symbol of prosperity. The festival also marks the advent of the spring season.
सिंदूर जात्रा पनि भनेर मानिएको छ र यो जात्राले चाहिँ धेरै युथहरुलाई चाहिँ युथहरुलाई अब संस्कृति बचाउने हैन संस्कृति बचाउने देखि रे नेवार कल्चरहरु अब धिम्या बाजाहरु कसैले धिम्या बजाइरहेछ कसैले बाजा बजाइरहेछ चाहिँ संस्कृति चाहिँ बचाइरहेछ र यसले चाहिँ हामीलाई जस्ट प्रोत्साहन दिन्छ पछि Meanwhile, devotees gathered on the banks of the Kalindi Kunj Ghat in New Delhi on Monday morning to offer arg to the rising sun on the last day of the four-day Chhat Puja festival. The festival is one of the significant celebrations in Bihar, eastern Uttar Pradesh and other parts of India and is usually celebrated with great devotion in the Kartik month of the Hindu calendar. However, in several regions of India, the celebration is also held during the Hindu month of Chaitra, giving it the name Chaiti Chhat. It is also referred to as Yamuna Chhat, as it is believed that the river Yamuna came down to earth on this day. Devoted to Goddess Chhati and Sun God, the celebration is observed over a four-day period, beginning with ceremonies of Nahai Khai. Devotees take a dip in water bodies, offer prayers and then eat pure food items while going to undertake rigorous fasting for the next two days. On the second day, worshippers observe a strict fast from sunrise to sunset, offering and consuming kheer, a rice porridge with jaggery before continuing the fast without water for the next 36 hours. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.